My name is uh, Rishi Kumar. Uh, I was elected to the city council uh, in November. Uh, recently elected, uh, lived in the community for about 14 years, and uh, I work in the high-tech industry. I'm a high-tech geek. Uh, I look like one, so that's my background. I am Olivia Yu. I live on Hardysville Place, and uh, I live actually part-time between here and Los Angeles. Felice um. Cocelli, and I live on Bremer Drive. I've been in Saratoga for 20 years. Yeah. Michelle Connors, and I live on uh, Blue Meadow Court. Arun Kanchi, I live on Blue Meadow Court as well. Ben Connors, and I live on Blue Meadow Court. Uh, Robert or Bert McClellan, I live on Braemar. Been here for 20, 20 years. Sarah McClellan, I live with him. <laughs> 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 I heard a lot of pride in the voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, good. Uh, Samir Mather, I live on Sumner uh, Drive. <coughs> Ralph Mades, I live on Pen Oak Way. I'm Milt Weirman, I live on Sumner Drive, right across from Samir. Uh, Shana Kisarova, I live on Hershey Drive. Um, Martha Morgan, I live on Hershey Uh, Monica Reddy, uh, also on Raymond Drive, right next door. 
Who may I have caught? Uh, McCarthy is really good. Byron Malachek at McCarthy School Place. I've only been there about maybe two years. <laughs> 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 Uh, Jim Kyoto's McCartysville Place as well. And Jim Mulford McCartysville uh, Place. That's great. I'll have the room in the back. Rahul Roy Blue Meadow Court. Juan Gold Blue Meadow Court. Todd Melvin, Evan Thunder Drive. All right. And how about the little kid back there? I want to hear your name. Yes. What's your name? Misha. Misha, what grade are you in? Kinder. Kinder. Wow, I thought you were like in 10th grade or something. <laughs> at least second. Yes, exactly, at least, at least second. second. Yes. As tall as I am. <laughs> so, uh, our objective today is to basically run through a process of what it takes to rule out a neighborhood safety watch. I would like to do a shout out to Oksana, who is one of our interns, and uh, she will be summarizing this via a video that we are collecting today. Uh, and and she, she has done a lot of wonderful work. She actually rolls out a monthly newsletter uh, that is published online at our website, rishikumar.com. So she is uh, she's a junior in Saratoga High and, and a great asset to us. <laughs> so we did a bi bicycle safety forum, and Oksana was out there introducing the panel and everything else. So a very good leader we have in our community. Uh, so how safe is Saratoga? Let's get, let's get going. Uh, it should probably take an hour to run through this presentation. And uh, then we'll do some Q&A type things. You know, we'll figure out what your challenges are and we'll go from there. So we are definitely the safest city in California. Back in 2013, we were number one. And in 2014, we are number two. <coughs> and this is based upon uh, populations that are greater than 20,000, right? Mm -hmm. Do we have crime in, the, in Saratoga? Yes, we do. You know, but we are the safest city. And safety is a priority in our community because, uh, you know, personally, like uh, in my 14 years, I've seen things happen in my neighborhood, in our community. And uh, it was, it is probably the top three challenges we have in our community. You know, there are not too many challenges, but it definitely is the top three challenge that we have in our community. And that's why I think uh, there are a few things that we have been doing to ensure that we address the challenge that we have, right? So for example, last year, uh, there were a string of break-ins that happened in the month of October. And uh, it seems like they were targeted to a particular community. And we ran a crime safety forum that uh, Captain Ken Bender actually uh, ran through right here in the community center. That was last year. And today we are running How to Form a Neighborhood Safety Watch. And uh, there is another crime prevention forum. We'll do this at least once or twice a year. That will be run by our sheriff's office. And it's all about uh, educating our citizens, getting feedback, and rolling that into programs, you know, and trying to figure out you know, how we need to address the needs of our citizens. right? So uh, Crime Prevention Forum, it is at the Senior Center, the Saunders Room on May 19th, uh, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So that might be of interest uh, for all of you to actually meet the sheriff. I did not invite any of the city staff today because Saturday, you know, let them, let them relax and have a good weekend. But on this day, on May 19th, we'll have city manager there. We'll have the, uh, uh, Rick Sung, who's the newly appointed captain. He will be there. And all of you should know uh, Captain Rick Sung because he's a wonderful asset to our community. He's got a team of law enforcement uh, folks who are out there engaging with our citizens and, and ensuring that uh, voices are heard and we address their needs. I'll have all the contact. I'll put the slides online. You don't have to take notes. And uh, I'll have some contact information, phone numbers. All the gory details will be put up here. And uh, then after that, on June 3rd, we have, we have HOAs, right? I think we have about 14 uh, homeowners association in in, uh, Saratoga and uh, we'll have a joint HOA meeting at which Captain Rick Sun will be there and he will also talk about what it takes to rule out uh, some safety measures in our community at that meeting so we are doing a bunch of different things we have also increased our spend last year you know we there was a 12 percent increase in budget if I remember it correctly we spent 4.2 million dollars on, on safety which is about 20 25 percent of our budget and then we increased it by another 400 K uh, which, which it leads to one more sheriff and 1,800 hours more of patrolling, uh, or, or rather coverage in our neighborhood. Now, uh, we are a minimal service city. We don't have a sheriff's office that we, that is on our payroll. You know, we actually get it from Santa Clara County, and that's why it's, uh, you know, it's, we share the services across the county. Many of the cities in our community are geared like that, so we minimize our expenses. All we, it's like a contractual obligation. We just pay for an hourly rate that we pay to Santa Clara County. Keeps it simple for us, and we can increase or decrease it. And, and the best part of this is, 
you know, when things happen, when there's some major issue in Saratoga, we'll have the forces from all over Santa Clara County who will show up here, you know. Regent, yeah. how many households are there in the city of Saratoga? The there population are about 30, 35,000, is that right? So 30,000 is the population. I would say about 12,000 households. Okay, so 400,000 is for one share. No, uh, 400,000. 400,000, see, that, that's the delta, right? That's the yeah, delta. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, we spent 4.2 million plus 400,000, about 4.6 million is what we spent on, on the sheriff plus the fire department, right? So it's, it's like a collective thing, you know? So to break it out, I can give you the breakout numbers. So this is the reported crimes in Saratoga from, and this is from uh, the sheriff's presentation last, uh, last year. If you look at residential burglaries, there are 79 of them. And uh, from January only till October, so it's a uh, part year. Then we have commercial burglaries. So all these types of things that happen, but the, the most predominant is the residential burglaries. There are 24 uh, vehicle burglaries, grand thefts, uh, auto thefts, identity thefts, 52 of them identity thefts. The next number is nine, traffic accidents, and then after that we have identity thefts. That's the huge problem. So top three, people breaking into our homes, identity theft, and uh, traffic accidents, there's not much you can do. So this is probably an asterisk, but this is the next one that uh, we need to really um, uh, address. Can I get a question there? Um, the sheriff's office seemed to, to differentiate between robberies when somebody's not home, or, or burglaries when somebody's not home, and robberies when somebody is home. Yes. Mm. Um, I don't see robberies. So, so uh, I think it's the grand theft. The top one. No, the top the, one. The oh, I'm sorry. Robbery. Uh, yeah, robbery. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Except a total of five or one. One. Mm. You, you know, uh, for 2013 was four. Well, there's one there in was, May. And so there's there. one, so there should be one. <coughs> yeah, so 72 in 2013, this went up to 79, and, and probably more because yeah, it was probably. until October. So uh, in the presentation um, uh, in May, our captain will have the most current data from last year. And the other is attempted, I think, as well. Um, attempted burglary, burglaries or robberies. I don't know that they actually do that on here because we've had quite a few attempted recently, but yes. you know, can alarm system yes. or you know, yes. something is the case. I, I can guarantee you that if it is attempted, it's probably part of this because if there is a report initiated, it's part of that. You know, whether they break in or not, it's still documented. Do we know if this uh, follows a, the same patterns in other? Of yes, uh, I believe we have a, a comparison. Uh, it's not in this chart. I'll, I'll, I'll have that information. Uh, I'll, I'll put it as part of this deck. Mm -hmm. You know, our crime rate, we are the safest city, is significantly less compared to uh, some of the other communities. Like Almaden, uh, Almaden um, in San Jose, you know, I've heard that it's become really uh, hard for people to step out of their homes because people are targeting, uh, thieves are targeting homes, they're breaking in. It's, it's gone completely rampant. In Fremont, if you report that uh, my home was broken into, they want to send you a picture of uh, the break-in and uh, they will not show up, uh, the alarm goes on, they will not show up. It's just completely crazy. So our SLAs, so when, when we call in and we say that there is somebody in my house, the, the sheriff will be there within seven minutes. That's the service level agreement we have with uh, the sheriff's office. And if, we, if this is like, oh, you know, there's somebody broken into my home and they are not there anymore, it's nine minutes. So that's the service level agreement we have set up. So I think we have a pretty good uh, agreement uh, contract in place with the sheriff's office. Break-ins do happen. So uh, uh, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how we can uh, create some prevent preventive measures on that. So as you can see, this is the, the map of where the incidences happen. Residential burglaries, they are spread across. You know, because uh, in last year, you know, when the sheriff was talking to our citizens, some, uh, the, the impression was, it only happens in my area, but it actually spreads across, it's all over, it's all over the map, you know. And, uh, and this is the 10 year burglary trend. Uh, the last year it was, this year we have a lot more incidences, right? But if you look at this, it really spiked in 2005 during the recession, and uh, peak of 96 in 2005, and, and this is the residential burglary and low of 53 in 2011, when we probably had a good economy. And now it's gone up. <coughs> it's gone up to, the 10 year average is 69.7. So it's somewhere over here, and, and looks like we are at the average here 
in 2013. So I don't know, the data for 2014 would be put up by the sheriff next month. But this is just background, you know, I think for our today's uh, discussion, this may not be the focus for us. The focus is more about the process, what it takes to set up. And ethnicity of burglary, because last year we were told that there is a specific ethnicity that is targeted. And if you look at, if you look at the population breakout of Saratoga, the demographics, you know, the, 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 it's very similar targeting, yes. Should I turn off the Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hard absolutely. Hard. Should I turn off the slide too? Yeah, yeah. the front no, light the front right. light. The front light, yeah, there you go, that's huge right there. There, yeah, yeah. yeah. better, okay. Yeah. But uh, I will be sending out uh, the deck. But let's, uh, you know, this is just background information. I'm sorry? No, your, your pad. Oh, yeah, yep, thanks. Thank you. So we have sign up, and uh, we'll put you on some sort of a mailing list. We do have arrests that, ha that happens, and typically it's cameras and things like that. Data, if there's data collected, there our sheriff's office is very successful in using that data to capture them. So they do a matching. So a camera captures, high definition camera captures the guy breaking in. They send it out, uh, the profile does match, and they figure out who this person is, and they very quickly and easily catch them, typically. So uh, I don't have the record in terms of how many incidences we were successful in capturing, but uh, we do have uh, some success rates. So how do we solve burglaries? Community involvement is key, right? So were they so, part of any gang, or were they individual burglaries? They are gangs, they are individuals, you know, it's, uh, it's across the board. And, and so if you listen to the sheriff's office, what they typically do, and, and again, this is not the focus, but I'm gonna digress just a little bit. You know, what they do is somebody is wearing track pants, cell phone, they, they blend in into the neighborhood, and they are running around pretending I'm jogging, and they just come knock on your door, or ring the doorbell, and nobody shows up. All they do, they'll keep walking, and they'll call a buddy and say, hey, I just knocked on this door, there's nobody there. And this guy will come along, and he'll have a card that I want to give this card. They'll go to the back of the house, they'll do something in the break-in, and they are in. So that, that's the typical modus operandi. And also, sometimes they target homes where they'll follow you while you, they know that you work alone out of home, you're working uh, all day long, you're in the home. They'll follow you, follow you for a grocery uh, pickup that you're doing or to the restaurant for a lunch meeting, and they'll have somebody else take out your home, break in, and they are constantly communicating, hey, this guy is coming back, please, please leave the home. So there was an incident that happened in my neighborhood about 12 years ago where uh, the lady, uh, my neighbor, actually stepped out to have a lunch meeting for 45 minutes in the middle of the day. The gardener was mowing the lawn, and these guys, they came, the fence door was open, so they walked in behind, the, the patio door was open, they opened it, and they got in there. In 20 minutes, they were ransacking the home. They brought the car in, they opened the garage. The guy who got in, he opens up the garage. They bring the car in, they close the garage. The, uh, the gardener is still outside, he's doing, doing his stuff. <laughs> And they basically put stuff in the car, they opened the garage and they were gone, within like 45 minutes of this, right? So they have a pretty well-run operation, right? This is what I think uh, they do. And uh, it's up to us to arm ourselves. And one of the first steps is community involvement, right? So we, we do need, like the sheriff says, we need your help. And suspicious behavior should be called in, right? I think that is the number one thing that we can do. In our neighborhood, you know, anytime we see anybody prowling around who does not have a business, we call the cops. It's okay. They come up, they, they will do an interrogation. They will ask, oh, you are here uh, you know, trying to sell something. Do you have a business license from the city of Saratoga? You know, there, people are not allowed to walk our neighborhood if they don't have a license, not a business license, a, li a permit to, to walk in our community, right? They need a permit, they need to be registered because our city wants to track everybody who's walking in our community. So not, not walking, soliciting. Soliciting, exactly. So Thank do, you. Do they have to wear a, an identifiable? Badge? No, they don't. But they have a permit. So sometimes so they have to show that. If you they were. have to show that. Yes, and they'll say it's in the car. And what we tell them very politely is, you know, I'm not going to report you, but somebody else might might report you, because you need to have a permit that you need to exhibit, and you will get cited cite, cited for this. You will have to show up in court. Your your business will not be responsible. It'll be your personal citation because you're violated. I think Milt has a comment on that. Yeah, yeah, we had an interesting <laughs> phenomenon that was I had someone who came to several doors who was doing a survey because our houses had been specifically selected. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the person said, oh, you know, I'm going to pay you $50 to do this survey. And we didn't do the survey. And uh, I called the sheriff because we just had the sheriff out to help us look over the house for security measures. 
stole up a, a I called the sheriff because that's what he said to do. Okay. And then I noticed she walked right across the street to Samir's house and she was talking to him and he said, well, you know, thank you, but I'm not going to do it and we need to have a permit. So she turned around, went to her car. I could see the whole activity and she left. The police came, or the sheriff came two minutes later. Of course, she wasn't there anymore. Ironically, she came back again about uh, three days later, and this time the sheriff was able to show up in time. Yeah, I see. But she was going through the same routine again. Yeah. And strangely enough, she was walking up to his door with some envelope, which I don't know what it was. Maybe she didn't. Uh, he wasn't it. there. I, I, I think the sheriff caused her to go and recover it. Yeah. Yeah, I looked at that. And we don't know what happened, but they talked to her for 10 minutes. She, she did come to our door like uh, three days, or I don't know. I think the first time when you called that day. Yeah, it was always Thursday. Thursday. Uh -huh. That was probably the first day. It was on a weekend. Yes. No. Uh, I don't know if it was a Saturday or a Sunday. She did come back. She, she had a pretty big celebration, too, though. Um, right. Mostly on media, media viewing, as well as on uh, uh, what, what sort of, uh, you know, basically it was like a what, what sort of products you buy, and typically, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a published book like that, they leave with you, and uh, you know, they, it was mostly about the magazines that you read, and uh, TV channels that you watch. But I think, so it, maybe but I think the point is different. Yeah, the point was that the sheriff said, don't 